Santa Cruz and Juliana have just released a new range of cross-country mountain bikes, the Blur and the Wilder. If you follow XC World Cup racing, you might have seen the new HT squad, or at least I think that's how they pronounce it, riding around on some new bikes. Now, interestingly, the coverage from the World Cup racing hasn't really shown the bikes in full, which I think is interesting anyway, but we can now reveal the new bikes. Before I give you too many details though, you do know the score. Like the video, drop comments down below, click the subscribe button, and as well, hit the bell icon so that every time we upload a new video, you get a notification. Okay, so there's essentially three new bikes. There's the Blur XC, the Blur Trail, and the Wilder. Now, naming conventions might make the first two of them pretty easy. The Blur XC is a purebred cross-country race bike. The Blur TR is a kind of trailified version of that. And the Wilder is basically the female version of the Blur TR. So the Blur XC is that full-on cross-country race bike. It's got 100 millimeters of travel at the front and at the back. The Blur TR gets 115 mil travel at the back with a 120 mil fork. And as I said, the Wilder follows this as well. So details are actually very thin on the ground, but from previous experience of the relationship between Santa Cruz and Juliana is that basically the Wilder will be the same as the Blur TR, but with some spec differences to make it a little bit more female friendly. So you're looking at things like the saddle and also different color options on the frames. They also slightly change the sizing range. So the men's get small, medium, large, and extra large, and there's only three sizes available for the women. But that's basically the main difference. So if we look a little bit closer at that Blur TR, because I think that's probably going to be the slightly more popular option of bike here in the UK at least. Now they don't call it a down country bike, but clearly it's basically a down country bike. These are slightly longer travel, slightly more rad versions of cross country race bikes or slightly toned down trail bikes. They're kind of for those long days in the hills, kind of marathon racing as well. That is something that Santa Cruz have targeted that bike at. And basically giving you the XC experience with a bit more capability so you can push your limits a little bit more. And that basically is what Santa Cruz and Juliana are pushing this Blur TR and the Wilder at. So to get the extra bit of travel at the back, you get the same frame, but with a longer stroke shock. That means the shock is able to compress slightly more than the shock on the XC bike. And this gives extra travel. It of course has a slight impact on the geometry, as does the extra 20 mil of travel from the suspension fork at the front. I'll talk about the geometry in a minute, but let's have a look at some more of the details on the new frames. Traditionally, Santa Cruz use a VPP or virtual pivot point linkage for their suspension. And this is basically two individual front and rear triangles connected with a pair of links that rotate in the middle of the frame. Now, there have been some diversions from this in the past. However, it is notable that this new blur is basically a single pivot with flex stays and a linkage actuated shock. So the rear triangle is connected directly to the front triangle. Uh, and then there's this little linkage that pushes the shock to actuate it. Now, they're using a flex stay system at the back to help manipulate that suspension curve to give the kinematics they want. This isn't anything new, but basically the rear seat stays and the rear chain stays have some flex built in there to help give the performance that they want from the suspension. Using a flex stay system instead of a pivot near the rear axle or a VPP linkage clearly saves quite a bit of weight. People seem to think that having flex stays on a bike is a problem, but personally, I actually really don't think it is. Flex stays have been around for around 15 years now, and anecdotally at least, I don't really know of many that have failed, certainly in modern times. Santa Cruz are far from the only company doing this. Transition, Specialized, Cannondale, Merida, all sorts of people do this, so I wouldn't be put off by that. What was slightly interesting when looking at the suspension diagrams for this bike is that Santa Cruz aren't relying on anti-squat to give pedaling efficiency. Anti-squat is basically using chain tension to prevent the suspension from squashing under pedaling loads. And it's used to make sure that the bike doesn't wallow when you start spinning the pedals. Santa Cruz are using the leverage ratio on the shock to provide that stability instead of using anti-squat. They say that using anti-squat uses up some of the energy that you're putting through the system to prevent the bike from squatting and also means that when you hit bigger bumps you get that pedal kickback. So by not relying on anti-squat for the pedaling stability, they give a smoother, more efficient ride. This is all basically theoretical and what Santa Cruz have told us. Now we were due to get a bike in advance of the embargo opening, however it's 2021, there's a lot of supply issues and we haven't been able to get hold of a bike yet. However, once I do get a bike, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I will be bringing a full review to Bike Radar. So 
look out for that and you will see how it actually works in practice. Looking at other elements of the frame, now I did mention that maybe this bike could be good for marathon racing and within the frame there are three sets of bottom mounts, two within the actual main triangle of that frame. You also get things like down tube protectors, chainstay protector too and SRAM's universal derailleur hanger. Talking about weight saving, they have managed to shave nearly 300 grams off the previous generation of the Blur, bringing it into a fairly respectable weight, which I don't have to hand because I haven't weighed it myself. However, it was interesting to note in the spec sheets that there are two paint options for the XC version of the bike. Now there's a salmon colour, which looks lovely, but there's also one that they call Dark Matter, and this is basically a kind of black paint. And they say that this shaves around 48 grams from the weight of the frame. Now black paints are lighter than coloured paints to do with the pigments or something like that, I'm not quite sure how or why. But I thought that was quite an interesting little feature and clearly weight is very important for Santa Cruz with their top end XC race bike. Also, as with the majority of the Santa Cruz and Juliana range, there are two frame materials on offer. Cheaper builds get a C carbon frame and the more expensive ones get the CC carbon. This is basically a higher modulus carbon that gives the same strength for a slightly lighter weight. So if you want the top spec race bike, you're going to be getting the CC version. Now there is a lifetime warranty on the frame. I'm sure they'll give you plenty of details as to what that covers, but that is kind of what you'd expect from such an expensive bike. I'll talk about the specs in a minute. But first, let's talk about geometry. Now cross country is evolving, so the geometry is very important. So let's have a look at the geometry. Now, as I said, geometry is very important on cross-country race bikes as tracks are getting more and more gnarly and bikes are expected to get more and more capable. In cross-country mode, a large gets a 470 mm reach with a 68.3 degree head angle and 75.8 degree seat angle. There's a 470 mm seat tube and a 331 mm bottom bracket height. So the same size large in the TR version, so that's a longer shock stroke and a longer fork, slackens things out to 67.1 degrees at the head angle and 74.9 degrees at the seat. The reach shrinks to 458 mm and the BB sits at 43 mm. So basically getting a slacker head angle which makes things a little bit more capable a slightly slacker seat angle, but that's unavoidable and might not be quite so good on the climbs. Um, and obviously the BB heights raise a little bit too. Because of the changes in the angle, naturally the reach is slightly decreased as well, which is something we see across the range with a lot of downcountry bikes. In terms of geometry, there is one semi-interesting thing that Santa Cruz and Juliana are doing with the Blur and the Wilder. Not many cross-country bikes have differing chainstay lengths for different size bikes. Keeping the same size chainstay lengths on all the frames makes a bit more of a financial sense, I guess, but it does mean that the rider experience should be improved with longer chainstays on bigger bikes. Now, how they're doing this, I'm not quite sure yet. I have asked the question whether it's completely fresh rear triangles per different sizes or whether they're doing something clever with the links or the front triangles, but hopefully by the time you see the news story on bikerider.com, I'll have the answers. So let's have a quick look at some of the builds that are on offer. Now there are quite a few, so I'm not gonna cover all of them. Also, I don't have any international pricing, so this is just in the UK. Hopefully by the time this video goes live, there will be a full story on bikecrowder.com with that pricing, and that will be linked to in the description down below. Now I will hopefully also be receiving a bike as previously mentioned, so do let me know in the comments if you want to see a full review of that bike down the line. The Blur XC collection gets a RockShox suspension package, so that means you get a SID SL fork and a SID Lux rear shock. They all come with fast rolling Maxxis Aspen tyres and come with lightweight dropper posts too. As with pretty much all of the bikes offered from Santa Cruz and Juliana, there will be a reserve option with that. Now reserve is Santa Cruz's carbon wheel company and they have a new wheel for the Blur, it's called the Reserve 28. If you know anything about the naming, it means it's got a 28mm internal width. Adding a set of reserve wheels to your Santa Cruz Blur, XC, TR or your Juliana Wilder will add a thousand pounds to the price. The XC range starts with the Blur CS. Now this gets the C-level carbon frame, it gets select plus suspension front and back and it gets a GX Eagle group set and it starts at £4,999. The Blur Cross Country range tops out with the Blur CC XX1 AXS RSV at £9,799. This features ultimate level suspension from RockShox, so that's a SID and the SID Lux shock. You get the reserve 28 wheels and you get a SRAM XX1 Access wireless group set in there too. So as you'd expect, that is all really top end stuff on their top end XC race bike. 
Looking at the trail side of things, there are going to be seven builds of the Blur TR and five builds of the Wilder. Largely, they all share the same components except a few little finishing details and that paint job to separate the Blur TR from the Wilder. The entry level build in both ranges is called the CRTR. It comes with a SID RL fork and it comes with a Fox DPS rear shock. It has a SRAM NX drivetrain and it costs £4,499. Builds then progress up the price range with GX Eagle, Shimano XT and X01 Eagle builds. If you've got really deep pockets and are interested in the absolute top spec builds, then the Wilder tops out at £8,199 with a CC X01 AXS TR RSV. Now the name hopefully describes that pretty well. It's got a SRAM X01 access drivetrain, it gets those reserved wheels, it uses the CC frame. While the Blur TR peaks with the CC XX1 AXS TR RSV model at a pound under £10,000. Again, XX1 access, reserve wheels, CC carbon frame. So that's the new Santa Cruz Blur XC, Santa Cruz Blur TR, and Juliana Wilder. How desirable do you think they are? They are obviously fairly expensive bikes, but will they be towards the top of your list for your next cross country bike? What do you think about flex stays at the back of a cross-country bike? Is it something you'd be willing to have on your XC race bike? Let me know in the comments. And as always, don't forget to like this video, drop some comments down below, click subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we upload a new video.